Hey everyone, today I want to talk about creep score and its role in League of Legends statistics. I want to talk about what creep score actually is and what it isn't, uh, what some kind of strengths and weaknesses of it are, some, some good understandings and good uses, some misunderstandings and misconceptions that lead to poor uses, uh, and kind of why and how we do and should use creep score uh, in League of Legends statistics, what we should be measuring with it. This is partly prompted by the uh, recent news that Riot put out that they're going to be changing the way jungle creep score is calculated in 2018. Uh, instead of counting each individual kill in the jungle as one CS, they're going to count every camp as a whole as a total of four CS. So if you kill the blue buff, you get, uh, you get four CS even though it was only a single monster. If you kill the full stack of Krugs, which uh, this year has been 10 CS, that's also going to count as four. The details of how exactly they break that out haven't been released, but you assume it's going to be proportional to the amount of experience and gold they grant, uh, which is you know based on the, the different sizes in the camp. So the, I'm not worried about the details, it's just that kind of concept. I, I came out fairly strongly against this idea. Um, <clears throat> I think my reaction was was too strong. Uh, you know, I, I think I can backpedal on that a little bit. Because my opposition to that idea is based on kind of the philosophy that I have around statistics and the philosophy that is shown by uh, the idea of taking something and that the statistic no longer counts the actual event, it counts a representation of the event. So instead of saying you killed a monster that's worth one, you killed 10 monsters that's worth 10, they're saying you killed a group of monsters and the value of that is four. So we're going to measure that as a four. And now it's, now it's a representation of the thing rather than the thing itself. <clears throat> that's something just philosophically that I oppose. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more later on about, you know, what I think a better solution is uh, to this problem and, and why it is a problem. But but just to kind of to cap that off for now, I, I think my my reaction against that issue, yeah, it was based on that underlying philosophy uh, and how I think this change doesn't fit that philosophy. But the, this, the simple aspect of that change will be helpful in statistics. It will you know, allow people to use creep score the way that they want to, uh, to measure jungle CS again, <clears throat> whether or not I think that's a good way to use CS, you know, that's what we'll talk about a little bit. So, so let's dive into things. Let's talk about kind of what is creep score and very simply, you know, obviously, uh, creep score just counts the number of successful last hits you've had that kill a minion or a monster. Uh, it also includes a lot of other things. Uh, depending on how you're measuring and where you're measuring it, it, it can include last hits on wards, uh, some kind of champion-generated minions. Uh, I believe they, they turned off counting for Illawi tentacles sometime in the last few months. Uh, <clears throat> within the, la the past year, they turned off counting for killing the minions generated from Zerat portals, uh, which, thank goodness they did that, because um, it was counting these things in-game. Uh, and that's why you're getting these these like CS records being set in pro matches and Frog and getting 750 CS or whatever because he last hit 150 Zerat minions or or whatever it was and that obviously made no sense. Um, <clears throat> but that's that's kind of what CS is, and you can define it. Uh, when I measure it on OracleSelector.com, I define it. I only count lane minions and jungle monsters as those are defined in the API. <clears throat> those two pieces of information are conveyed separately so I just take those two I add them together I'm pretty sure this is the way the Riot broadcast does it as well that's what they've said in my conversations with them uh, so that you can actually sometimes get little differences between what's reported on a stat site for CS or on the broadcast and what's reported in game in the scoreboard at the bottom of the screen because that's going to also include ward last hits and other things like that that I would not define as CS uh, <clears throat> what is CS kind of conceptually? Well, it's a measure, it, it's interpreted as a measurement of how much successful farming a player has done. Uh, so how many minions have they killed? And, you know, then you can compare between players. This player has gotten more last hits, this player has gotten fewer last hits, and it's just, you know, how much farm each one has had. Uh, it's important to note that uh, CS only measures successful farming if you define farming as gold received and not experience, because you get experience by being close to to uh, a minion that dies, an enemy minion that dies, you don't have to get the last hit on it. <clears throat> but of course, you only get the gold for the minion if you get the last hit. And with monsters, you only get the golden XP in the jungle if you are the one who gets the last hit. So you have to accept the assumption that if you want to say that CS captures farming, the concept of farming, then you're only capturing the gold aspect of that, not the experience aspect. Uh, this kind of gets at one of the 
one of the subtleties of the issue of, of kind of what CS is not. Uh, CS is not a measurement of strength. It's not a measurement of how many resources, uh, it, you know, a direct measurement of how many resources a player has received or gathered. Uh, it's always a proxy statistic. It is always a thing that represents something else. It is not a measurement of the thing itself. So farming is a kind of an abstract concept. CS, you could say it's it's a more or less direct measure of farming, but farming is not an actual uh, measurement of something in the game. It's just a description of something. Uh, the actual resources in League of Legends are gold and experience. And if you're measuring CS, <clears throat> you're using that as a proxy to say, this player has more CS than that player, therefore this player you know, has earned more gold in theory uh, and possibly more experience, although as I said, CS doesn't capture experience. Uh, so you're, you're using that to kind of infer that the player with higher CS has probably gained more gold from farming. You don't know that for sure because the value of CS changes. Uh, when you last hit a cannon creep, that's worth more gold to you than last hitting a caster minion, but they are both counted as one. Uh, in the jungle, this is a, even a bigger issue, which is what they're trying to fix, because if you last hit the blue buff, that's worth, you know, uh, around four minions on average. And so uh, you're not really measuring the thing itself. You're not measuring how much farm or how many resources the player has received or generated. You're just measuring kind of a, a, a proxy of that thing, a, a side kind of abstraction of that thing. And, and this is really the big issue with CS and statistics. Uh, that you you are not measuring an actual resource. You're measuring a completely indirect version of that resource. Uh, CS has been used in MOBAs, you know, all the way back to Dota, uh, because it was something kind of built into the way we interact with the game, and it's just kind of been accepted and moved forward. And it is useful in some ways, uh, but but you have to understand these limitations. You have to understand that whenever you are using CS to to evaluate a player or a team and their performance. You're never measuring a direct actual concept. So let's talk about why and how we do use CS, what it is useful for, because this is not one of those statistics that I would say, you know, it's the best we have, but it's actually really bad. I think it is useful in certain ways. Uh, we can use uh, CS to measure laning. So one of the most uh, long-standing classic statistics in League of Legends is CS difference of 10 minutes. Uh, often used as 15 minutes <clears throat> on broadcast lately, but I, I'm... A much bigger fan of measuring lane phases ending at 10 minutes and early game at 15 minutes uh, because there are a lot of rotations tower kills often happen between 10 and 15 minutes things like that 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 make it not actually 15 minutes isn't a good measurement of your performance in lane in my opinion uh, there's too much other messiness that happens in the 10, 10 to 15 minute period so that's just a personal opinion but uh, cs difference in 10 minutes that's kind of a proxy for did you win your lane did you uh did you farm more effectively than your lane opponent? Uh, you probably, if you got more CS, that probably means you're winning the damage trades and so on, and you just got a lead. You got a resource lead by outlaning your opponent and getting more farm than they did. Uh, again, this is only a proxy, because winning lane is kind of an abstract concept. What does it mean in different scenarios? Some champions actually don't mind losing lane because of their power curves. Some champions don't mind losing lane because they roam and they set up, uh, they, they get their resources from kills. Uh, as you know, Fizz would be a great example. He's almost never going to win his lane, but if he gets out of lane into the side lane and gets a kill or an assist, that's probably going to make up not only some of the resources he lost from farm, but also it's going to get his team, uh, his teammate ahead. So we we can use CS as a pro as a proxy for measuring uh, your your performance in lane. It's got all these issues, but it is a useful thing that can tell uh, a relatively clear, simple story about how well a player or a champion performed. We also use CS to measure. Uh, by at, by proxy, of course, resource distribution in the mid and late game. Uh, one of the stats that I, I that I quite like, uh, CS share post 15 minutes. We look at a player's, on average, uh, share of their team's total CS after the 15 minute mark, and we use that to see where is this team putting their, um, you know, giving their farm to. This player is the one who's receiving a lot of these minions or, or monsters that team is putting resources into that player, or that player is generating those resources by their own strength or, you know, all these nuances to it. Uh, I think this is a useful story to tell, uh, and this is a good use of CS. Uh, we can also use it uh, another really indirect way to measure map control. Again, map control being a very abstract concept, we're trying to use CS as a proxy for map control because map control is not something you can measure directly. It's not something you can really define directly. 
Uh, it's just kind of an idea. But we can look at jungle control. So we can look at uh, the number of jungle monsters being killed by both teams and you know what kind of the proportion between the two is. Uh, you can also look at lane control, which is the same thing but with lane minions. Uh, <clears throat> how many lane minions did each team kill and what's the difference in proportion to each other? And that kind of helps you understand who is controlling the lanes more, who has more ability to kind of push the, the waves up, kill the minions, not have them denied, uh, and has kind of control of the map that way. So this is a, another useful way, I think, to tell a story about the game and, and how the game played out, how the, the grouping of games or the aggregation of games plays out. Uh, it's a valuable usage of CS that I don't think you can really measure in another way. Uh, CS is also useful in the fact that it doesn't mix with resources generated from other sources. So when you're measuring CS, uh, you you are only getting at the farming aspect of the game. You're not getting at golden experience, which are also generated from kills, from objectives, things like that. So uh, that's that's one of the reasons that we use CS for all of these different things. Um, in the example of you know Fizz roaming out of lane, if we were just measuring Fizz's gold difference in 10 minutes and experience difference in 10 minutes, uh, we might we, we don't really have any idea where those resources are, resources are coming from, whether that's coming from farm, whether it's coming from combat. And CS helps us get another angle on that story. If we see that he's got you know uh, an even or high gold difference in 10 minutes, but a low CS difference in 10 minutes, we know something about the way that game played out. We know that he generated resources from combat. So it's helpful in that way as well. So, so these are some of the ways that I think you can use CS to do useful things uh, in LOL statistics. Uh, but in every single one of these cases, CS is always a proxy. It's always something that uh, tells an indirect story. And so to, to kind of bring this back around uh, to, to kind of why we use CS and, and the idea of kind of converting jungle CS into 4 CS per camp rather than an actual counting of the monsters killed, I think CS as a whole is easy to use. It's, the data is actually available in, in the, the data that comes from the API, uh, whether it's uh, the actual pu public API for, 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 uh, for online matches or the, the much more kind of closed and awkward API for uh, eSports matches. And it is worth using, but, but uh, it's, the, the change to Jungle CS is kind of a halfway solution to a problem that has not been fully defined. It's a solution that helps you now, okay, now we've got a little bit more parity in what the value of 1CS is. We don't have the situation where 1CS is worth, you know, a blue buff, 1CS is worth, you know, the, the little baby Krug at the end of the camp, uh, and now, you know, you're, you're treating those two as the same value in the CS number. That's a problem, and so shifting the camps to always be worth four helps to solve part of that problem, but, the, but it doesn't solve the actual problem, which is that, CS is a, is a proxy. CS doesn't measure anything directly that is that is really real other than the number of last hits. So what you've done by changing jungle CS into into four per camp is you've you've removed the ability to tie a single CS to a specific event and say that is what that thing measures. Now you're measuring the representation of the thing, but you have not done it across the whole game. You still have this scenario where uh, a caster minion is worth less than a melee minion, which is worth, le worth less than a cannon minion. And all of these things, you know, translate into some relationship with the jungle CS. And there's still a, an imbalance there because you're measuring this, this concept indirectly. If you really want to solve this problem of being able to move past the, the kind of the, the, the vagaries of CS and go into something that really measures, a, first of all, measures a real thing is consistent and gives you more information uh, than, than CS, then what you need to do is change the way the data flows so that we can measure the, the gold each player is receiving and the experience each player is receiving and split them up by source. Uh, so right now we're receiving gold, uh, the data on how much gold players have. We're receiving data on how much experience the players have. We're receiving data about how much CS the, the, the players have. But we can't say, you know, uh, the player has 10,000 gold 6,000 of it came from last hitting minions, 2,000 of it came from last hitting monsters, and 2,000 of it came from kills and assists. If we could do that, there'd be very little use for CS. Actually, CS, it would, it would get past all the problems that CS has. Uh, it, would be, it would allow us to tell much richer stories analytically. 
uh, and, and come to much richer conclusions analytically. And this entire, you know, awkwardness of taking a single monster kill and treating it as a count of four in this indirect proxy stat, that whole problem goes away because we don't need to worry about that anymore. We're counting actual units of gold, which are a real thing in the game. They are, uh, we know where they're coming from, and, and all of this messiness is resolved. So that's what I would like to see happen, ideally, is have some way to get at a real thing, measure a real count, do it in a real way that makes real sense, rather than having to kind of shift around these kind of layering an interpretation on top of an event, interpreting the interpretation, and then you just, you end up with a whole bunch of issues. So uh, this has just been some of my thoughts, kind of what, what creep score is, what it isn't, why it's useful. Uh, hopefully it, it kind of summarizes some of the ways we can use it, and I don't want you to come away from this video saying creep score is a bad stat and we shouldn't use it and it should be avoided because I don't think that's the case, but I do think there are better ways forward, and I, I just, I, I'm not a big fan of halfway solutions to problems, uh, and hopefully this helps to define the problem a little more clearly so that we can get to a more reasonable, complete solution.